Hi, what's going on everyone? In the last part of the video, we went ahead and demonstrated how is it that we can use Coil and PHP to access some APIs or some kind of a URLs and that really went well. In fact, we even went ahead to use a post method to a kind of um, access the APIs and we're able to even make payments using this post method. Okay, so what we're going to be doing in this part of the video is to take a look at number two and number three, and that is get request and then put request. And I will talk about this uh, delete in a later in a later time. So we just have to keep that aside. From what I'm trying to say is that we're going to take a look at get and put right away within this class and and to really explain what these two things are doing right now when we talk, when we talk about gate gate is really used to really fetch data from an api but this time around parameter that is always used within this place is always passed through the url and with that means that uh, the the data that you want to make use of may not be other sensitive enough so that's why that has been passed through the URL. What we're going to be using this to do is that we're going to a kind of verify a payment that we have made using this post, okay, which is a actual an application or an example that we have written before. And I'm going to show you that in a moment. And after that, we're going to take a look at this put. And if you don't know what put is, put request is all about updating. So if you want to do something like updating a customer within your um your API or within any API, you can use put request to do that. So without wasting much time, let's take a look at um, the code that we've written before. So this is the first one that we wrote. We really use this page to a kind of access APIs. And after that, we, it, we also looked at this part, which was, um, we, we really implemented the post method here. And if you look at this line, this that is what we are kind of trying to demonstrate right here. So this is a post request, and we used it to a kind of a create a customer within a uh, pay stack we went ahead to create this one which was about making payment within pay stack okay so this is also a um, post request all right so we're going to kind of uh, transform these right now and then transform them into get request that's what we want to do in this part of the video and for this file that is where this is really the success page that is after you make payment within this page you have to move ahead it will automatically redirect you to this page where it will have to say successful payment and that redirect is really coming from here see the callback url for the redirect okay and in fact let's let's demonstrate this let's demonstrate this if we go back to our brother right now i think if we do that you understand it more so if i say localhost post slash c url and p right there so let's say kind of open this page right now and see what works for it. And once that is open right now, we can use any of the test cards that we have right here. So I'm going to just click on success, this particular first card. And I'll click on pay 100 Naira. And if everything works fine, it's going to pay and it's going to automatically retreat to the verify endpoint. All right, so if you take a look at the URL right now, you see that that automatically redirects to the verify.php endpoint and it has the reference code embedded for us. All right, so as you can see, we have um, a reference being passed through the URL and what we need to do right now is how is it that we can capture these from the URL and a kind of uh, paste that within our code to verify this particular payment. All right, so we have the reference on the URL. If you watch very well, we have the reference right here, and that is automatically going to be passing that onto the URL, and it's going to be different anytime you make a successful payment. So what we need to do right now is how is it that we can now verify this particular payment before giving value? And that is really where we are going to a kind of um, experiment with the gate method that we are talking about. So if we go back to our development environment right now, and um, we take away this, so what we're going to do first of all is to go ahead and pass in our PHP uh, tag right here. I'm going to close this right away. So within this page right now, what we need to do is to write a code code that is going to enable us um, a kind of a verify every payment that we we'll make. Okay. And to do that is really very simple. I'm going to just copy this page. So let me go ahead and copy the, uh, the PHP page and then modify because the code I'm going to write are going to look similar. So why not just copy that and paste that within this page. So I'm going to paste that right here. I think I don't need this because it's already copied as part of what um, is coming in. Alright, so if you look at that right now, this is what we have right now. And 
the first thing that I would like to correct right now is this particular URL okay this URL is really not pointing to transaction for slash initialize what we're trying to do is to verify the authenticity of a payment that I just gone through so we should be going to the verify endpoint not the transaction initialization endpoint and if you don't really understand this I'm going to open the documentation page right now and um, I'll show you something so if you are on doc for slash API right now pastack.com for slash docs for slash API and you click on uh, what is it called verify transaction you are going to uh, kind of uh, land on this page okay so the, the URL that we need to reach right now is this particular URL so we need to go to api.pastack.co for slash transaction for slash verify then we can go ahead and append the reference code which is on the URL right here this particular reference code that's what that I mean that's the interpretation of this okay and if you look at this place very well you see that we have a gate as a method embedded on this and this is really a very nice API okay so if it was supposed to be a post request we're going to see post right here if it was supposed to be delete we're going to see the, if it is supposed to be put you see that right here but this one is gate and that's why I say that we're going to use this endpoint to illustrate what gate does for us okay so what I'm going to do right now is to go ahead and copy this URL I'm going to copy it right now and if I go to my development environment I'm going to go ahead and change this URL right now I'll paste that right here and what I'm going to do is to take away this reference and append my reference code so I'm going to take the reference code from the URL right now I'll copy this and if I go to my development environment, I'm going to paste that right here. So we're going to kind of verify this particular transaction. And every reference code or every transaction has a unique reference code. We could use something like a gate, um, super global variable up here to kind of uh, bring this dynamically. But we're going to do that as we build applications. But I don't need to bother myself doing that right now. But just know with that you are not going to be copying and pasting this particular thing right here. So I'm going to use something called a, a super global variable in PHP gate super global variable to automatically capture this from the URL, you sanitize it and place it here automatically. Okay, so but we're, going to, we're not going to do that right now. Then moving on, we do not need this request body. So I'm going to take that away. If you, if you watch the documentation, the documentation does not require that you should uh, put a request body right there. Okay, if you look at this, the only thing you need is your header, that's the authorization. And then the body parameter is just the reference. That's the two things you need. And if you look at our code, we've already satisfied that. We have the URL, which is the endpoint, and we have this one, which is the authorization that you just saw there. And this one is talking about that reference. So we have those two conditions satisfied right now. And the next thing that we need to do is we're going to have to change this if you look at this place this is where we are deciding that this is a post request or a gate request so i'm going to customize this now to become a gate request right now so i'm going to take this away so instead of post i'm going to just type um i'm going to just say custom that's going to be custom request and what i need right now is to change this so i'm going to change this from true to this is going to become gate like that so I've, with this line i've really converted this to a gate request so i'm going to change this to let me just say gate request okay and the next thing that we need right now is to take away this because we don't we don't we have already deleted the body i mean uh, the post fuse we don't need this right now so i'm going to take this away we don't need a, um, a, a request body so we don't need that so I'll delete that and if I scroll down, the rest of the things can stay except this line. We are not redirecting to any link. And I'll take that away. Then I will uncomment this. And the reason why I'm uncommenting this is because I want to see what is coming back to me from um, Paystack. Okay? The person's uh, details will come back, the payment details for this particular person. And in this case, I think uh, the person that made this payment okay is ati emmanuel164 at gmail.com that's the person that made the payment that we just copied the what is it called the reference code right here 
so let's save this page right now and if we go to our browser and give that a shot we should have some stuff returned to us from paystack so i'm going to go ahead and refresh this page right now and congratulations if you look at this we have status to be set to true and the message says verification successful and then within our data we have uh, the customer or the payment id right here the transaction id is right here and the status is set to success and the reference if you look at the reference is the same thing as that which we have on the url and this is the amount that we have okay so we basically have everything if you check the name if you check the name the customer object right here we are going to notice that we have uh, the first name is Atia and this is Emmanuel as last name and the email is also right there so we basically have everything that belongs to that person to a kind of a show back to us and as for this amount you know we paid 100 naira and I have explained this before but this is going to come back as uh, 10,000 naira which if you want to print this out on the screen for your customers so as a receipt you are going to have to divide this amount by 100 okay so I'm going to have to divide this by 100 to get the actual amount but this is just how to do what how to um, verify a payment and um, this is just um, and then get request of course so this is get request okay all right so just take a look at the code very simple very simple all right so that is that and um, what I'm going to do right now is um, we're going to go ahead and create another page now to work on our put all right so the next thing that we're going to do right now is to work on this uh, the next uh, method which is called uh, the put okay and like I said it's all about updating something so the concept that I have right now is um, we have to go ahead and kind of update the customer within um, a stack so with that we are, we are going to need to update the customer maybe change the first name or the phone number of the customer to see or to demonstrate how this works and let's go back to our development environment i'm going to copy this particular page which um it's gonna it's gonna make it easier for me because i believe that this is going to um the customer's endpoint and um yeah so this is going to the customer's endpoint if you look at this place we have the endpoint to be going to the customer so i'm going to kind of change things up from that place right here so i'll copy this page get the page copied and i'm going to create a new file that i'm going to go ahead and call put.php and if i open that up right now i'm going to go ahead and paste this right here and if you scroll to to this place where it says um this particular place where we have um post and of course that's just what we just we finished with right now so i'm going to just change this from post to custom request so that's going to be custom request and i'm going to go ahead and set that to put instead of gate so this will be taken away and it's going to be called um, so this is just going to be called a put that's the method i want to um a kind of implement right there and if you scroll up a bit you scroll up a bit we can change these things up let's say for instance um let's say that we're going to change the phone number to something else so let's call this 090 as a phone number right there so that's the phone number that we're going to change and if you also want to change something like um uh, emmanuel to something like uh, let's say we'll call this emma right now just like that and then if we save this page and we give that a shot we're going to notice that this particular customer right now is going to be changed from Emma I mean from Emma to Emma and the phone number will also change and you may ask me why is it that I'm not changing the, the email address the thing right there is that uh, Paystack did it in such a way that they don't normally allow you to change email addresses of any customer okay if the email address is really not correct you should create another account instead of trying to alter the email address but you can change the first name the last name and even the phone number 
and even add some custom data if you want okay so that is just how paystack made it so i got the page saved and if i go to my browser right now the first thing i want to do is to log into my dashboard and let's let's take a look at um, emmanuel right there first of all to see that it's still there before we affect the changes all right so once this page is loaded you can click on customers and if you look at this place we have um, Emmanuel it here and this is the phone number so once we execute this code we're going to notice that the phone number will change and Emmanuel will be changed to Emma right now so let's go back to our development uh, I mean our browser and let's access that file right now so this is going to be called the put.php and let's take a look at that right now and we get an error so let's find out where we're getting that error if we go back to the development environment and we'll take a look at um all right so we're getting that error probably because it doesn't really know which customer we are trying to update and um okay you know what we're gonna have to take away these we don't even need to include this since the email cannot be changed but what i need you to understand now is that this this particular endpoint doesn't know which customer we really need to change we need to identify which customer is that that we want to change so we're going to add the forward slash right here and we're going to get the customer code so if we go back to our dashboard we need to click on this particular customer and if the customer loads up we need to capture the customer's uh, customer code and in this case this is the customer code and we're going to copy that so once we get that copied to our clipboard we can go back to our development environment and embed it right here so we have that customer force like the customer code we'll save this right now and if we go back to our coding and we we'll refresh this page we should get a response right now and congratulations we have the status to be set to true the message says customer updated and if you look at the first name it's right there but the last name now has been changed to Ima and the phone number is now um, what we have right here which is not uh, the previous thing that we have right there and if you go back to the development uh, I mean uh, the dashboard if you refresh this page the changes should take place and congratulations as you can see that will change to Ima and the phone number should also be changed the carry right there okay so congratulations if you got it up to this point you have to congratulate yourself that's really good that's great but uh, that is how to make use of um, what is it called put okay that's how to make use of a put request all right so even in the transaction everything will be changed everything will be changed across all, all wherever the name the customer appears everything will be changed okay so that's beautiful you know and um, before I say goodbye for now let's a little let's talk about this delete the delete is really talking about how is it that someone can delete um, a customer but as it stands right now at the moment Pista does not really allow anybody to delete um, a customer from their dashboard the only thing you can do is to blacklist or whitelist the customer so if a customer is performing an activity that you don't really like you can blacklist such a customer and he wouldn't be making transactions with you anymore and the person will not be doing anything within your, uh, your application anymore okay so what i want you to understand right now is that we cannot implement a delete request within paystack but i may look at uh, another api that may allow for something like deletion right there and then i will experiment with um, such platform so that you can learn how to do this but at the moment you don't need to bother yourself so much about that but in the next one i'll try to show you how to make use of this and i can you can a, a kind of a, try to do that by yourself you can find other platforms that you can that really allow delete so you can experiment with them before I hook up with you on the next class. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.